All right, it's seven o'clock. Thank you. Uh, it's seven o'clock on October 26th. And uh, this is the first uh, council meeting that I'll be chairing as your deputy mayor. I hope you'll be patient with me. I'm not quite as eloquent, eloquent as our former mayors have been. Or, or, uh, anyways, um, this meeting is being held by Zoom via Zoom teleconference and is being recorded. I wish to acknowledge that this meeting is taking place on the unceded territory of the Coast Salish peoples. Tamtawe Wheaton or Belkara is home to an ancestral village of the Slavatus Nation, and we are thankful to conduct our work within their territory. I would like to call to order the regular council meeting of October 26, 2020. Before we get started, I'll note that this is a relatively new platform for council meetings still. I'd like to ask that residents hold your questions. At the end of each report, I will request council input. Following council input, I will ask for residential questions. Give a question. Please click on the participants icon at the bottom of the screen. It's the raise hand icon, it's a blue hand. That'll indicate that you wish to speak. I think most people are familiar with that by now. So make sure there's no one in the waiting room here. There's not. Next item is the approval of the agenda. Will someone move to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Bruce Drake and seconded by Councillor Carolina Clark. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, none, motion carried. Next item is the adoption of the public hearing minutes from September 28, 2020. Will someone move this item? So moved. Moved second. by Councillor Clark and seconded by Councillor Drake. There's all in favor? Aye. None opposed, motion carried. Next item is the adoption of council meeting minutes from September 28, 2020. All in favor? We need a mover. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Sure. I'll move. I'll second. First blender. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Uh, we do not have any item four delegations and presentations. We have no items for, to present. Under number five reports, I'd like to ask Laura Beveridge our planning consultant to outline the next report. Hi there, good evening everyone. Good evening, your worship and council. I'm gonna be giving um, a quick overview of the chicken keeping policy um, and here to answer any questions if there are any um, after the fact. So as a refresher, this item is the result of council direction at the September 14th and 28th council meetings to move forward with permitting the keeping of chickens through the creation of a chicken keeping policy. So this policy is based on research of chicken keeping in other municipalities in the lower mainland and BC more broadly. Um, one item, there were a few items that I wanted to highlight, but one in particular um, was raised by council at both the September 14th and 28th meetings. Um, and that was waste runoff from chicken feces and its impact on streams. So none of the other municipalities um, that we looked at or that we reviewed had regulations that require a chicken coop to be set back from water courses. So in following the lead of those municipalities and we spoke to staff um, staff in, in several as well, um, the Belcare chicken keeping policy does not include requirements for setback from water courses, but there are considerations to address potential runoff um, from waste, including um, making sure people are disposing of waste properly, um, making sure that chicken coops are located in areas where they wouldn't be inundated by seasonal runoff or heavy rains and that kind of thing that could um, result in leaching into ditches or lakes or streams or wetlands. Um, and then there were a couple of changes that I just wanted to highlight uh, from the policy that was presented on September 14th. The first um, is that we're now uh, recommending a maximum of six chickens and a minimum of two, whereas initially we had suggested a maximum of four. 
And the reason for that change was just based on feedback uh, from the community. Um, a member of the public had suggested that six might be more appropriate um, for a larger family wishing to um, feed themselves or you, you know, get um, produce from those chickens. So that was why the number was increased to six. And then the second change um, is the registration, proposed registration fee is now $50, um, whereas initially we had proposed 100. So that was based on feedback from council. The fees associated with violations, so $200 for the first violation, 400 for the second, and 600 for the third have not changed. Um, otherwise, the policy is largely the same. And I'll just give a quick uh, overview of what's in there. So. Um, that chickens be permitted on all residential properties in Belcara, but roosters um, are prohibited, mostly because they're noisy. Um, chickens must be registered with the village as well as with a BC premises ID. Um, the BC premises ID allows the province to notify owners of illness or other outbreaks. Um, that any byproducts such as eggs be for personal consumption only, and that chickens cannot be slaughtered on an individual property. Um, this is for health and safety reasons, um, that chicken, the chicken enclosure must be large enough um, and schematics must be submitted uh, to the village at the time of registration. And then lastly, that a village contact for complaints is established. So all of this is outlined in the policy in the staff report, but just wanted to give you the greatest hits. Um, that was all I had to say, but happy to answer any questions if there are any, thanks. Thank you. Um, will someone move this item, please? I'll move. So moved. Second. So moved by Carolina, uh, Councillor Carolina Clark and moved by Councillor Bruce Drake. Is there any discussion by council? Yes, I had raised my hand and then I think Bruce has too. Yes, you have. Okay. Carolina. So, all right, so I'll start. Um, so Laura, I understand that, um, like you said, in other municipalities, there's no such thing as setback from water streams. I, I do think Belcara is in a different position being a waterfront community and having the water streams run straight to the ocean. Um, is there a way that we could, um, could do, we could create some setbacks for that? Yeah, we could, if council was interested in requiring setbacks, that is something we could do. Um, in the other municipalities that we connected with, we, we spoke specifically um, with Caribou, which is a more rural municipality as well. Um, they actually just had a typo in their, um, their policy. So in their policy, it said that they required setbacks, but when we followed up with them, that wasn't actually a requirement. And the reason being that the chicken um, waste, I suppose, is what you could call it, is the same kind of risk as dog waste or cat like it's the same um kind of stuff I guess <laughs> that's not a very technical term but um and so that was um so in all of those other municipalities the city of Vancouver also did because there were concerns there they did some research as well on um the risks associated with chicken waste and they found that again, it's not any riskier than cat or dog or any other kind of typical household animal. But oh. that being said, if you felt strongly that there should be setback requirements, it's absolutely something we could look into or include. Okay, I would like to hear from the rest of council. I think it would be interesting to have some setbacks from the water streams here. Um, um, as you know, I, I have three dogs, um, of my own and and I can tell you um, they poop in different places every day. <laughs> so we would, you know, and as the chickens will be pooping in the same place, right? And if it's too close to the stream, then that might be a problem. But I would like to hear uh, from the rest of council and the community as well, how they feel about that before I uh, propose anything. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilor Bruce. Yes, thank you. Uh, I had exactly the same question uh, based on the uh, concerns that uh, 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 Rob had mentioned uh, previously, um, and I suppose what I would be, I would just be after an assurance that we have protected the, uh, the uh, runoff situation, uh, whether a setback is necessary or simply satisfaction 
uh, for our staff that, it, that there is adequate protection because I imagine you can enclose these things. These chickens aren't running loose. So if you can enclose the area and ensure there can't be runoff from it into a stream, I'd be happy with that. My only other question, I guess, and I'm disposed to just see this for a couple of years and see what experience we have with it. Uh, and I don't think that requires anything. I mean, other than the fact that when one, uh, one tries something like this, you cannot anticipate all the effects, all the problems you may have. So I'd just like to ensure we come back and, and revisit this and not give uh, a carte blanche uh, that we can't address in future. Obviously we can. So uh, yeah, I'd like some provision that ensures protection of uh, stream water, water bodies. So one thing I suppose to consider um, is that there are there are considerations in there that say, you know, you can't be located in an area where there would be um, extreme runoff or where there is a yeah. lot of water runoff. The other thing, as you mentioned, is the chickens are within the coop. So mm -hmm. they're contained within an enclosed area. Um, and so the theory is that you'd be able to clean up the chicken waste from mm -hmm. that enclosed area yourself. And that again is the responsibility of the property owners. So they are mm -hmm. the ones who are responsible for cleaning that up and disposing of it um, properly off, off of their property. Um, but again, if you wanna have some setback requirements, we could absolutely include some. I guess the only thing to consider there is um, how much of a setback you require and does that then limit some people from having chickens on their property because of how far you want them set back. Not that it's impossible, just a consideration. Okay, well, thank you. Um, myself, mm -hmm. I, I, I've never had a chicken. I uh, lived on farms uh, when I was a young girl, with my friends, and, uh, and I know a friend of mine has chickens up in Kelowna, and they're so happy with them. And she uses the chicken poop um, for um, in her compost. Mm -hmm. And she's, it makes brilliant soil for her garden. So that was the only comment that I had to make. Are there any questions from the gallery? Um, oh, I have my hand. Oh, uh, I, I apologize, uh, Carolina, go ahead. Um, I didn't One that. more question, uh, when it comes to enforcement, uh, because I know, you know, the, the bylaw officer, whether uh, someone on staff is going to go there and make sure the enclosure is good. Um, but as time goes by, will that be any staff checking from time to time? Um, because, you know, my concern too is that people start off doing, um, following all the rules and somewhere down the road, maybe, you know, um, they will be lacking following all the rules. I don't know, that might not happen, but, uh, but that is a concern of mine. Um, especially also because we need to think about the wells. We don't just have the water streams. We also have wells around here, right? So, uh, so yeah, so as long as, uh, as far as, um, as, as far as, you know, uh, bylaw officers go, um, are we going to have someone checking periodically? And I, oh, anybody can expect, I expect that maybe I could, uh, Refer that one over to Lorna Dysart or CAO? Um, I think that we probably would. Um, in the beginning, it'll take a while to check out each um, person who wants to have chickens in their enclosure. And um, I find in Valcara, usually the monitoring takes place amongst the residents. But um, we could certainly. Um, make sure that they're um, checked on once in a while. We don't really have the authority to go on properties, as you know, just randomly without a good cause. So uh, I, I think probably the residents would be good at advising us if they see anything. And I, okay, so we would be more on a complaint basis. Um, is that something we need to do like, um, and I'm sorry it's, if I missed this somewhere in the document, um, do we need to, to do this every year? Do we, uh, does the residents have to get a permit for that? Is that something that is renewable or you just get one permit, one check and that's it? You just can get one permit mm -hmm. okay. and then you're allowed to have chickens. Mm -hmm. Those are my questions for now. I'd like to hear from the gallery what they think. Thank you. 
I have Peter or Deborah Strzok. Hi there, it's me. Um, my, my concern isn't just about the water courses, it's to do with wells, because there are some people that still have wells, they're still on wells, especially some older residents that haven't. And apparently one of the homes that is actually applying for chickens, a neighboring property has had a lot of runoff that comes down to the two properties below on Marine. And so um, I'm just wondering what kind of possible recourse, of course, I, I think I've heard that somebody's dug ditches or tried to deal with that, but let's say one of the residences and then if it really runs off to do with the chicken, is there some sort of recourse mm -hmm. just in case? Because I would hate to have there be excessive runoff and some people don't deal with it and then somebody totally innocent down below ends up infecting oh, yeah. their well. So I, can I believe if we were, at Laura, you go ahead. I was just gonna say, I could just answer um, with respect to violation. So the, in the fees and charges bylaw, there are three different fees associated with violations. So 200, 400 and $600. So that would be um, one option for recourse in terms of somebody who doesn't follow the rules as outlined in the, or regulations as outlined in the chicken policy. Okay, but what if the runoff isn't actually from the person with the chickens, but the neighbor and it runs off down and because of the chickens are there and then it affects those below. That would be a little bit more difficult because it's not actually the people with the chickens, but their neighbors run off. Jeez. I believe your worship that the neighbors would certainly let us know and we could follow up on that. Okay, um, Councillor Drake? Yeah, I mean, I think Deborah raises a good point. I mean, there's several observations, right? One, I, I gather the uh, feces has a similar impact to dogs and cats, which of course we don't control, but then on the other hand, they don't constant, they are not concentrated in one location. Um, I think it should be clear that if there is a you know, a negative impact on a neighbor and obviously concern about a well or impact on a well is a legitimate concern. Uh, that should be a, a provision that would require uh, corrective action and, and ultimately could lead to a, 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 a removal of the authority to have chickens, it seems to me. I mean, I think protection of a water supply is, is pretty critical and, and I assume it can be done. But uh, if there was a problem, uh, that should ultimately lead to the uh, protection of the water supply is, is paramount. So I agree with Deborah on that. Okay. Do we have any more questions from either Councillor or the gallery? Not seeing any hands. So, um, I'm going to call all in favor. No, no one's in favor. Hang on one, just no. one moment, please. Sorry. I just wanted to check if we're, we're asking obviously for some amendments to this. I wanted to be sure we're not, are we finalizing this? I thought we were. That's what we were doing. It's, um, yeah. we'd already read it uh, three times. So this yep. was the adoption of the bylaw with those two small amendments, one with the fees and uh, then with the number. Yeah, your worship, this is the adoption of the policy Oh, okay. By a separate. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you wish to move an amendment, um, then that should take place. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to suggest, and pardon me if we're out of sequence here, but yeah, I'd like to suggest that we explicitly note that there, there, there mustn't be a, a negative impact on neighbors uh, from the chickens and that that, that, that itself uh, could lead to a loss of the, uh, of the authority to keep them. So how we word that, I'm not sure, but I'd like to see that incorporated and, and that it be broad enough that it could pick up uh, the very serious uh, concern that uh, water, uh, water quality could be impacted for a well. Yeah, I, I agree with Bruce. I think, uh, I think we need an amendment. Uh, so do you second that, Caroline? I'll second that, yes. Okay, thanks. 
So do you want to vote first on the amendment? Yes. Sure. That is that there be no impact on the neighbors and that follow up take place. I will word that better. Yeah. Says, yeah. Thank you. Okay. So you could vote on the amendment first, please. Okay. Lisa, you want to call the question? I do. Are you um, all in favor of the uh, the policy as amended? to include uh, that the no impact on neighbors and the water, water quality, which I'm sure Lorna will nicely word for us. So vote on the amendment first, please. And then on the motion as yeah. So I'll move the amendment. Moved by Bruce. Yeah, I seconded. And now we just need two votes. In favor. Aye. Aye. And none opposed, that's carried. So now we go back to I imagine that we are now uh, voting on the amended policy. Yes, the motion as amended. That's right. The motion as amended. Your Worship. Mm -hmm. All in so favor? So, but, but that's adoption, right? So does it go back to staff for amendment and we do not adopt today? That's a point of order, by the way. No, um, Your Worship, they, um, there was an amendment to the main motion. And so the main motion would be that it be adopted with the considerations as outlined in the amendment. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so I move. All the question. Yeah, it's yeah. moved. I think it's seconded it already, mm -hmm. right? And all in favor, none opposed. Motion carried. Oh, all in favor? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, Laura. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. And Lorna will outline the next report, 5.3. Yes, 5.2, Your Worship. Um, and this is my report on the by-election for the vacant Valcara Council positions. And as you know, uh, Councillor Begg and resigned as a council member on September 30th, and Mayor Belinke resigned on October 13th. And the purpose of the report is to bring council up to date on uh, what is required for a by-election. And uh, I am working on um, getting everything ready for that right now. Uh, council has advised that they would prefer to have an election sooner rather than later. And so I'm working out dates, you know, around the Christmas season. So it won't be, an election wouldn't be too badly impacted by that. Um, I've been in touch with Elections BC and the Ministry of Municipal Affairs in this regard. So they're aware that we um, will be having a by-election. And um, this year, because of COVID, the ministry has set out really strict guidelines uh, for holding an election. We are very fortunate that in 2018, a new election bylaw was adopted. And sorry, yeah, and 20, was it 2018? Yeah. And uh, that allowed for mail-in ballots. Mm -hmm. So we are already in a really good position to hold an election. But even though we will allow for mail-in ballots, um, we will ensure, um, I think there is a 19 page document put out by the province for what you need to do uh, to hold an election under the COVID restriction. So I've been in touch with a couple other municipalities that have had uh, by-elections during the COVID period. And so it is possible. So um, as I mentioned, we're in a very fortunate position that uh, we may have mail-in ballots as well as in-person voting in Buck. Um, I will be, um, as I said, bringing another report back to council in the near future uh, with regard to the hiring of a chief election officer. And uh, from that point forward, there's 80 days until the election must be called. So Thank you. Um, that covers everything. Okay, before discussion, will someone move this item? I'll move it. By Second. Carolyn, Carolyn Clark and seconded by Councillor Brent mm -hmm. Strait. And any discussion, uh, Carolina Clark, I see your hand up. Yes. Um, thank you, Lisa, for putting my hand down. 
Um, so yeah, I think, you know, it's, um, although I would like better to see a spring, um, a spring by-election, I do think it's important for us to move ahead with this um, sooner rather than later, up on some more, more thought, uh, because there is some big decisions ahead of us and I would, um, it would be more democratic, I would say, to have a full council. Um, the other thing I would like to suggest if council agrees is that we hire, um, we look into hiring a different uh, chief election officer. I think it's time for us to, um, yeah, for a little change in there. And um, yeah, and I would like to hear the comments from the other councillors as well as the public. Thank you. I would like to advise council that I am looking um, for a different chief election officer. So. Perfect. Thank you very much. Then, yeah, that's, I'm happy with that. Bruce, do you have any comments? Uh, no, only that I, I think we should move as, as, as soon as practical. I appreciate there are lots of barriers and it's a challenge given the season. Uh, hopefully it is an active Christmas season coming up, but uh, the sooner we get a full council, the better in my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. And I have Deborah Struck. Yes, you do. Hi. Um, and, and I'm going to agree with Carolina um, to do with waiting until the springtime. And, and, but I would like to ask a question first of the other councillors, why they would like to do it sooner. And, and my thinking to wait would be better. And when it, you look at Burnaby Council lost two councillors last summer, they died. Burnaby Council has still not appointed an election officer and they are running without replacing those two. So, and given the size of our little village, I don't know. I just, I think rushing that soon might not do the best thing, but I am Bring willing on. to hear from Lisa and Bruce as to why you would think that filling the positions early would be good. I'll go, Bruce, you go ahead. Sure, thank you. Uh, and and uh, thank you for the question, Deborah. Uh, my feeling is, I mean, I don't know what's, how, what size Burnaby is, but I suspect it's more than five. With only uh, three of us, uh, you know, one, one illness uh, means we don't have quorum. Uh, one declaration of conflict means we don't have quorum. And uh, uh, frankly, I think when you're dealing with uh, decisions that impact the entire community, and we do have some uh, coming up, uh, I think you ought to have uh, as representative a group as you can. And I think you get that through elections and you get that through having a full council. As we've seen in uh, the last uh, few months, and it's inevitable, not all council members agree, when you have a very small group, I think the risk is higher that you don't get all perspectives uh, reflected in the discussions and decisions. So that's my logic. I mean, we, we can't move that quickly. I'm guessing the very earliest we could manage is an election sometime in February. I'm just guesstimating there, but that doesn't strike me as that fast. That's still several months away. Any of it, that, that's my reaction, Deborah. And mine falls the same under, you know, I've always said sooner than later, people I've been talking to said, you know, just get it done. And uh, um, my feeling as well is we have some major issues that have been on the table for a long time. And uh, I think it's important that we have a full complement of council, make those decisions and not just leave it to three. Uh, but for heaven's sake, so the village voted in five people. I'm just looking at Burnaby, three, six, nine, they have nine. So if two passed away, unless that's a current photo, um, they're down to seven. So they would still have quorum if they lost one or two. Uh, we wouldn't if, if someone falls ill, someone's away on vacation, um, someone has uh, declared a conflict. So I think the sooner that we have a full complement of council, I think that's in the best interest, in my opinion, of the village. And, um, and I would just add, uh, if I may, Lisa, is that um, anything, anything happens to one of us, you lose quorum right there. If one of us are late, 20 minutes for a meeting, you lose quorum. If one of us have to excuse ourselves to go on a pee break, we lose quorum. Um, so we're in a really tricky situation now, besides the fact that, um, that is, there's only three of us, there's a lot of work to be done. And uh, obviously all of us um, um, 
you know, we're taking more on our plates than, than, uh, than we did before now with the both resignations. So I, I would say I, I took that in consideration as well. Um, yeah, those are my comments. Thank you. Uh, Deborah, do you have any other further comments on this? Well, thank you for that. That's helpful. Um, is it possible that some of the very important decisions could just be put off until after you have a full council and you don't have to be pushing through some of the more critical ones? And then also, does count, will council have any input as to who the chief election officer is, or is that just up to the CAO, Lorna Dysart? Well, if I can... Lona, you sorry, I, I will just answer part of that for Deborah. Uh, council approves who the chief election officer is. They're appointed by council. Okay. Seeing no further hands, are there any? Oh, Wait. Bruce, he's got he's got his <laughs> own hand up, not his blue hand. That's right. It's my pink one. Um, yeah, Deborah, I think you're absolutely correct with respect to deferral. Like I will come up to that. I think later. I mean, I I don't believe a three person council ought to, if it can avoid it, make critical decisions. It really ought to be a full council. So those issues that aren't, that can be deferred, I expect a three person council should defer them personally. So yes, I, I take your point and I agree with it. Okay, um, not seeing any more blue hands or pink hands. Uh, can we now call for the vote all in favor? Aye. And none opposed, motion is carried. So, next report is item article six, reports for mayor and council committee representatives. And that means I go first. Um, the first appointment, I want to just, uh, first of all, thank everyone for um, bearing with me as being appointed uh, the deputy mayor for the interim period. And I'm going to do the best that I can for you. Um, you know, my phone is always available, as you always know. Or if you see me on the street, please feel free to call me. In the meantime, the following council member appointments will be made effective until after the election and the inaugural. Uh, Deputy Mayor Wilder, myself, is appointed as Deputy Mayor. Councillor Carolina Clark, uh, she was confirmed as a Municipal Director to the Metro Vancouver Regional Board of Directors. Uh, myself, I was appointed to the Transient Mayor's Council. Myself and Councillor Drake, uh, we we're authorized as signing officers for the village. And myself is appointed to the Assessment Volunteer Fire Department Board of Trustees. And Councillor Carolina Clark be appointed to the Assessment Volunteer Fire Department um, Board of Trustees, along with Councillor Drake, who will retain his appointment. Councillor Carolina Clark was appointed to the Metro Vancouver Water Committee by Metro Board Chair Dollywall to fill that vacancy in that seat. Mm -hmm. So we've been busy this last week. Uh, is there any discussion from council? Yes. So I would just like to add a, a couple of things. So, uh, so yeah, so I was appointed uh, by Sav Dollywall, which is the chair of the Metro Vancouver to fill in the spot, as Lisa said, for the water committee, because they needed one. Um, also, the appointments on Metro Vancouver for all the other committees, they happen once a year. They happen in November. So after November, we will know if we are going to get reappointed for committees such as, par as parks and the one that the former mayor was part of. Uh, obviously, in my view, um, I do think that the most important committees that they'll care to participate at this point in the region it would be the Parks Committee as well as the Water Committee. So I'm really hopeful that we would get another seat on Parks. Um, also, I attended, um, I was sworn in last week and also I attended the workshop um, budget for the board. So I would just like to give everybody some updates on this. So the increase per, ho per household um, on the Metro Vancouver fee that we all pay, everybody at each household pays uh, being part of Metro Vancouver region. Um, they, were, they were talking about an increase of 7.4% uh, in 2019, but because of COVID, they decided to just increase 3.2%. So um, 
so per household would be about $577, going from 560 to 577. Obviously, Belcara won't pay that big chunk because we're not part of a couple of services that they offer, sewage being one of them. Uh, the other thing I would like to point out about the budget too, again, this is just, uh, we had the workshop on the budget on, I believe on Wednesday, last Wednesday, this is still going, uh, the budget is still going to the main board for approval. And that is going to happen on Friday. So, um, so what I'm telling you is the information of the workshop. Something might change, but I'll let, obviously I'll let council and everybody know uh, next meeting if he does. Um, the other thing that is increasing as well, it's, um, it's a 4.9% a year increase that the board was talking about per tone for tipping fees. So <clears throat> they, were in, they were going to increase $7, but again, they decided because of COVID and everybody got hit um, pretty, you know, some harder than others financially, they are increasing about $4 per ton. Uh, for people to have an idea on what kind of numbers this um, would bring as an increase for Belcara, uh, in 2019, we disposed uh, about 90.33 uh, tons of garbage. So, um, so you went four dollars per ton, and uh, and that will be your total. Um, and and yeah, and that's all for now. So we just purely talked um, about about the budget, and those are the main points that uh, that I wanted to share with council as well as the residents. Um, and like I said, I will let you know as I go to the meetings, I will always come back to council meetings uh, on a, you know, uh, giving sort of a, um, a little bit of uh, telling you guys a little bit of what happened there, especially the things that will affect Belcara the most on a bullet point form. And if anybody has any questions, free, please feel free to ask. Thank you. So that's my update for now on the Metro Vancouver. Thank you. So much. Bruce, did you have anything to add? I, yeah, I'd like to, uh, to comment because just because of the category we're under uh, on the uh, work I've been doing along with assistance from a number of residents on the uh, issue of monitored fire alarms. I can do it under new business at the end, uh, your worship, or I can pick it up here. Um, well, we've discussed it before, so I don't think it's new business. So okay. I would like to... Sure. Yeah, I just want, for those that are following this process, and I appreciate nobody follows it typically until the last 15 minutes when they think it's going to impact their taxes. But for those that are paying attention, uh, we do need to establish a, uh, assuming the village goes ahead with this and council hasn't yet approved it, we do need to establish a, a standard against which eligibility or non-eligibility will apply for monitored fire slash smoke alarms in homes. And it appears that there is a uh, the underwriters laboratory of Canada standard, which applies to the installation and service for fire systems, uh, as well as the actual equipment. So I am going to propose that we make use of that. There's a little more research to take place, but just a heads up for those that have systems and expect to take advantage of the, uh, the opportunity this will provide to get a credit for it. Uh, you'll want to be sure that, in fact, uh, your, your service provider meets that. I'm confident most will, but uh, if there's a major problem with that or someone's aware of a major discrepancy and that it doesn't cover some very uh, competent and capable systems, uh, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind getting a call from someone. So that's all. Thank you very much. Very much. So be prepared to receive another report from Councillor Drake. Yeah. Um, are there any questions from the gallery? Yes. I don't see any hands yet. Oh, Jim Chisholm or Sherry Chisholm. Jim or Sherry Chisholm? You're on mute. Um, maybe you should unmute them, Lisa. There. Oh, she got remuted. She was on. I've just unmuted. You better she's muted. Hear me now? There we go. Okay. Yep. There uh, we go. I was curious as to where we sit on our application for approval of sprinklers, fire sprinklers. Good question. Um, your worship, the uh, building inspector is working on that matter. 
Um, with the province, there is quite a significant amount of work to be done um, as far as um, having that uh, new consideration because we would be the only municipality in the province um, with that, uh, with an application in to do that. So it is being worked on at the staff level. How long do you anticipate it'll take? Well, when Mayor Belinke and I um, met with the province on a Zoom call, they anticipated six months. And can you confirm when that was, uh, Lorna, please? Again? Uh, it was probably within the last six weeks. So four to five, four and a half months, possibly. I would anticipate that. Mm -hmm. And we have Councillor, I'm sorry, was there anything else, Jim? Okay, I guess at the same time, uh, when do we expect a report from the on the water from North Vancouver, on with your re meeting with Chris Bolt? Uh, your Worship, this probably should come under new business. It's not really related yeah. to the council. I don't mind answering here, but we're getting into other topics. Yeah, we can move that into new business. Okay, is that all right, Jim? Sure. Okay, and now I have Councillor Drake. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, just further to Jim's comment, uh, one of the things perhaps we could have um, checked is the uh, basis upon which and the potential utility of Anmore's practice of requiring uh, the uh, sprinklers in certain areas of their village because of comparatively low water pressure. It would seem to me, if in fact that is the basis, and I have not verified it myself, Lorna, but I understand it is an absolute requirement in some areas of Anmore, and it would seem to me we have a valid case, uh, either based on pressure or fire flow supply, uh, to have uh, similar uh, restrictions in terms of home construction. And I'd just like to, to follow up. just like to have that checked. Thank you very much. Sure, I will do that. Mm -hmm. Very much. Any other? comments from or questions from the gallery? No? Okay. Um, so that was just reports, so we don't need to vote on anything. So the next two items we have, we have bylaws, number 7.1, 7 Village of Belcara Fees and Charges Bylaw 517, 2018. Amendment bylaw number 572, 2020, keeping of chickens. Now this is the bylaw for the fees. Uh, can, would someone move this item please? Second. And moved by Carolina and seconded by Bruce. Any discussion by council? No, not me. <laughs> Your worship, this finalizes um, the report that Laura uh, covered off and it just is confirmation of the fees and charges um, that are established in the policy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, none opposed, the motion is carried. 7.2, I'll move. Just a second. 7.2. Is the Village of Bell Care Fees and Charges Bylaw number 517, 2018, Amendment number 570 to 2020, the pre application zoning fee? And will someone move this item? I'm sorry to catch you. Did that? Moved. Moved by Bruce and seconded by Councillor Clark. Any discussion by Council? Yes, I have a hand up. Um, so can I? Either you, Lisa, you might know more about this than I do, or, or through you, if Lorna could explain a little bit more what this application is about and how did that come about, uh, pre-application fee for review of large rezoning applications. Okay, well, I'm going to tackle this one, and I'll have, <laughs> and I'm going to let Lorna correct me if and when I make a, an error. So from what I understand, uh, we have our rezoning application fee and uh, residents or the developers, let's say, would come to the village hall and they would have, you know, uh, their item checklisted and you need this and this and this and this and this. And then they come and um, so when they have a large rezoning and they bring it to the building inspector, sometimes uh, 
the staff have to send them away, not once or twice, but a number of times, and they're spending a lot of time on it. So it's the thought that um, why should the costs associated with staff be uh, charged out to the entire village when it's really the responsibility of the homeowner and the developer to get all their ducks in a row before they present their application. So it's, it's basically recouping staff time. Okay, so that's an addition um, or is it a change? Um, I'm going to defer that one. Yeah, it is it an addition, Your Worship. Be there is an application uh, fee and the application fee covers all of the work that's done after the application is approved moving forward. But as uh, the Ma Deputy Mayor explained, there's a lot of work uh, leading up to a rezoning application. And so this, um, this was recommended by our planners. It's common in other municipalities. This rate is much lower than in other municipalities but it is um, for the developer uh, to cover the costs of the work that needs to be done to get their application in order. Okay, and what is the application fee for the chair? Um, what is the application fee? Uh, it's because you said there is an application fee and now there's this fee. Um, what's, what's the amount on the application? It's based on what the rezoning is. It varies depending on how many properties there are, how big the subdivision is, mm -hmm. what sizes are, it's based on a lot of different factors. Okay, thank you. Okay. And Bruce. Yeah, um, just a question and I'm sorry, I, I'm not familiar with the details of process. I am familiar with regulatory bodies who are perennially haunted by quote unquote applications that weren't complete. So I'm familiar with the frustration of getting uh, to the starting line on a, on a formal technical process. Uh, but are there instances, Lorna, that you know of where uh, individuals come in for rezoning and we don't have to send it back, i.e. it arrives functional on the first go? It's very, it would be very rare. I, I'm sure it's extremely rare. I just, mm -hmm. I just, I uh, wonder if we couldn't forgive this in the event, in the unlikely event, that somebody actually doesn't require to be given back the application two, three, four times. The, it's just a question of whether we can grant any discretion to staff to waive this in cases where there is no additional upfront work necessary. Yes, um, through the chair, this is just for large, uh, large rezoning applications. Okay isn't just for smaller rezonings that might take place in the village. So it, there is the discretion with the fact that it would be a large rezoning application. So the definition of what's large or small would be discretionary. I appreciate you could get into some very messy circumstances if you granted discretion uh, across the board, but I just, it seems to me it could be a, a, a situation, there could be situations where people don't incur that kind of time cost from us. And they may be rare, they may not exist at all, I don't know. Hey, um, now I'm not sure if I should be taking questions from the gallery at this point because this is a, um, has already been read for second and third time on September 14th. So That's it's correct. just approved. So this is just an approval of the uh, fees and charges bylaw that has previously been discussed. Yeah. Okay. So um, can I now ask if you're all in favor? So, so hang on, Lisa, just, just for a second. So, so we can take comments in because that was part of the public hearing, I guess? Or We previously discussed this. Okay. 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 So this is just approving what we've already discussed and passed. Okay. So if I can just clarify once more, I mean, my, my question, and I appreciate it may be a hypothetical case, but was, uh, you know, are there instances where someone ought not to be charged this on the grounds they don't incur unique costs to us? And, and I take it the only discretion we have is deciding whether something is a large or a small rezoning. Uh, I just wanted to clarify that. I'm, I'm, prepared to let it go, but I think we should come back at some future point to look at 
all our fees and charges in terms of whether or not we should grant the potential to waive them in the event you have, uh, uh, there virtually is no cost incurred by us. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, that makes sense. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Then I'm prepared to vote on this one. And, and I guess I have just one more question. So, Lorna, I guess when the rezoning application is a large one, there is more work, work involved. Would that be fair to say? Yes, there is a significant amount of work involved if it's a large rezoning application. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, Bruce, I guess that goes a bit with your question. Um, yeah. There's more work involved, even if they bring it like, yep. all correct at the first time. Have we had any large rezoning applications? Not recently, no. We've had rezoning applications, but not but large. But lar large ones, so this is probably an insignificant. Um, it, it it's not really insignificant. There. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, so all in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed, the motion's carried. Number eight, correspondence proclamations. There's 29 pieces of correspondence. Will someone move to receive these items, please? I'll move. Second. Alina Clark and seconded by Bruce Drake. And all in favor? Aye. Okay, so so this is the correspondence. And then it's just for a receipt at this point. Just for receipt. Just for receiving the correspondence. Okay. Under number eight. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed, motion is carried. There's two action items resulting from the correspondence received. The first one is 8.1A. Um, is the first is uh, regarding the declaration of October 2020 as Foster Family Month. A letter from Corey Hevener. Will someone please move the first item? So moved. Second. There's Carolina Park, second. Any discussion by council on item 8.1A? No. Um, do I take discussion from the gallery at this time? Lorna, can I get your direction on that, please? Um, Your Worship, I, for the first two action items, I don't know what the discussion would be, so. Okay. All right, then. All in favor? Aye. And none opposed, the motion is carried. The second action item is regarding a request from Sassman Outdoor Center for a letter of support for a grant application to the Community Economic Recovery Infrastructure Program, 8.1B. Uh, this is from Robert Simmons, the community board. Will someone move the, the item, please? Move. Second. Bruce Drake, second. Any discussion by council? No. Nope. Nope. Okay, so, so this is a motion to the, that the council provide the Sassman Outdoor Center with a letter of support for the Community and Economic Recovery Infrastructure Program grant application. All in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed, the motion is carried. Information items. Is there anything arising out of the information items council would like to discuss? Yes, I would like Her, to. Carolina Clark, please. Thank you. So, you know, so once again, um, I see obviously um, a lot of letters um, about parking. Uh, with our meeting being canceled, um, because obviously, uh, you know, council will not make any big decisions in the meantime, while we don't have a new mayor and, um, and a full council. It, we have a motion that previous council approved uh, that only goes until, uh, for resident only parking, that only goes until October 31st. Um, so we're off season now, thankfully we're, we're getting less and less traffic as the, as the weather's cold and there's you know a lot of days uh, with some rain and there's gonna be more and more. And I do see that some residents now are concerned because this is no time, it's no season. Uh, some of them don't wanna have um, 
the inconvenience of having, you know, obviously a lot of people have very steep driveways, so they'll be parking their cars on the road. And some of them are saying, you know, it's a bit inconvenient for me to, um, to have the passes on it all the time. So what I would say for that, like, obviously I'm not looking into making any major changes with this. I want to make clear or start pulling out a whole bunch of signs. But I do think that um, staff as well as council, um, we should consider um, just for some residents, the ones that are saying, listen, I maintain the front of my place uh, with gravel or whatever. Now I have that sign there. Can it please be removed just from in front of my house? I would like to consider that. And, 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 and you know, but first I would like to hear from council what they think, but I don't see a need for, not, not again, I'm not talking about removing all signs. I'm talking about leaving Bedwell Bay the way it is, Mitten the way it is, but for the few residents that don't have problems to begin with in front of the places and just for the sake of being more convenient during the winter time. And, uh, and also, you know, recognizing that the motion that council passed only goes until October 31st and recognizing that any major decisions on parking will be done with the full council. I'd like to consider for staff to consider to just, you know, um, deal with those people with those very few people that are complaining. Um, you know, so there's letters here from one resident at Belcara Bay, one resident at Robson Road. Um, yeah, so I'd like to see what, what the rest of council thinks about that. Bruce. It's not hard to reach the rest of council with just three of us. <laughs> um, Look, I think it's obvious from the letters that we have and the diversity, there's a lot of people feel strongly on both sides of this. Uh, there's no question about it. Uh, I have to say, uh, I'm leaning toward the restrictive practice that we have in place myself. Uh, I just think on balance, this is one of those cases that's a 5149 uh, instance I'm leaning toward the more restrictive practice. I think I'd, I'd have be calm longer about people having to put guest passes on cars or have a sticker from Balcara. Uh, I'm more sensitive, uh, at least I consider that less of an imposition than the imposition on those uh, who find they have uh, cars parked adjacent to their home or in front of their home in locations where they'd like to be able to park, particularly given that insofar as the park is concerned, of course, there's lots of, uh, of parking all this time of year. Mm -hmm. So having said that, I, I guess you, you, what you're suggesting, uh, Councillor Clark, is what one, I think there's only one letter here that asks to have a, a ticket a sign taken away. You're just asking to have that taken away, but then we yeah, certainly would have to instruct uh, our own uh, bylaw enforcement officer that, uh, well, I guess that would take care of it, right? You can't photograph the car with a sign in sight. So you'd be, uh, you'd be clear in terms of parking there. Yes, what I'm suggesting for, is for staff to have uh, the power to, to, you know, just in the next few months until we get a full council to make a decision yeah. on this, for, for staff to have the power to accommodate those very few residents that are writing in and saying, listen, I maintain that place. Yep. I make those spots um, and it's very convenient for us right now. Um, obviously, I'm not, you know, trying to do this along Bedwell Bay, which is a problematic area, or along Mitten. Um, but I think it would make some sense. It's just a few people. It's not that many. So I think it would make sense in the meantime to meet halfway sort of thing, as you're saying. Um, uh, it would make sense for people to have the freedom to write to staff and say, listen, this right in front of my place very inconvenient for me throughout the, the winter. Can I get this removed uh, in the meantime while council, you know, the new council comes up with a solution for the parking situation. Um, I, I don't fear um, doing that right now because uh, it's very few people that are asking for that. Yep. And, uh, and now we're in a season that it's not busy. So I don't see a problem with doing that. And, um, and I think again, that this should be dealt with between staff and, um, and the resident. Uh, okay. Can I just um, ask uh, Lorna um, uh, if you can maybe make a comment on this? Um, Your Worship, I know there are just very few people on this agenda. However, since uh, Council passed that motion to put in this um, uh, type permit only parking until the end of October, yep. um, 
you have tr staff have tracked every letter that has uh, been sent to council in email with regard to parking. And it, um, it is a huge item. Yes. We really feel that council should consider all of the correspondence at once. So we have a spreadsheet um, that um, we've kept track of all the correspondence and whether they're in support of uh, retaining the resident only part or the permit only parking or they're not in uh, support of that. And uh, in further discussing the spreadsheet that we have um, with, uh, Dep with the deputy mayor, uh, we had talked about putting the addresses on it because I think the in favor uh, or the support and the non-support may show um, different areas of the village. And, the ones that are impacted by all of the overflow parking from Balcarra Park and the ones that aren't. And so I think to advise staff right now, just to start removing a few signs and not um, being consistent with bylaw enforcement, that would be really difficult. And also having said that at this time of year, uh, parking enforcement isn't, um, as big an issue as it, as it was when the weather was really nice. And certainly with snowfall, if people um, just try and stay off the road so the snowplow can get through, you wouldn't be ticketed at that time if, if we happen to have snowfall. So it's up to council, but I think when I've seen this big spreadsheet in this report, it's it's a very complex issue in Bel Yeah. yeah. We'll be seeing all this for years. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm sure we'll hear from the from the, uh, the those uh, people attending the meeting as well in a moment. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to make the point that I mean I have read through all these letters and uh, two two items are important. One, there are a lot of people uh, indicating that they appreciate the uh, increased access to parking, the the reduction in the number of cars, the improved safety provisions uh, that have been afforded by this restriction. One. And two, I do think uh, location is important as you're uh, alluding to uh, tactfully, Lorna. I mean, for those that aren't dramatically impacted or haven't been yet to be uh, you know, calm about the impact on people who are affected when we open up uh, the parking, uh, I think we need to pay attention to the people that are bearing the cost of uh, parking and, and be receptive to that. Now, I do have I have other concerns that I think should come forward in terms of a meeting. I'm, I'm not a fan of towing unless they're safety related. I understand that that's a complex factor, but I, uh, I will and we'll come back to that. And I also am conscious of the fact that uh, this policy is supposed to be lifted in a few days. And I will make a motion that we extend it in just a few minutes. Uh, uh, but I think for the point you're raising, we could also be uh, more forgiving about tickets when uh, when uh, somebody has, for example, there's been forecasted snow or some other event that uh, I, I, I don't, we're gonna give a ticket out, but I think we should be receptive to circumstances where people had a legitimate concern. Any of it, uh, that's it. I'd like to hear from the gallery as well. Okay, I've had uh, Ben Shulstani patiently standing by, Ben. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor Walder. Can you hear me okay? Yes, perfectly. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I had a question regarding item eight correspondences um, when you were uh, basically accept, accepting them. Um, uh, I understand there has been many correspondences from residents related to docks on Bedwell Bay, but uh, I don't see any correspondence from uh, 3762 Marina Avenue on the same issue. Could you please uh, elaborate on why that is? I mean, there's so certain co correspondences have been included, but no correspondence on the same issue from 3762 Modern Avenue was included. Your Worship, uh, this is a matter that's under litigation. So that, that answers a the question there for you. May I? May I just, so I, I, I disagree with that. Actually, well, uh, you may disagree with it, but my CAO uh, doesn't. So, uh, so she may I, may I have a, litigation. May I have a, 
may I just uh, respond just very briefly? Um, so the correspondence, I, there may be, uh, I think uh, Lorna Dyson may be referring to, uh, uh, maybe ha may, ha may have a misunderstanding. Um, the correspondence was related to new doc applications, the one that was related to the, plan, the port plan 2020, which was included in the agenda. So this is, uh, I don't believe something that was put on the agenda now. I mean, the date of the plan is September 20. 24 or 23, uh, uh, 2020. So I don't think anything would be under litigation uh, when um, on, 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 on with respect to that plan. And when that plan is different from uh, this, from the, the, the prior plan in, in 1999. Okay, well, I'm gonna just uh, interrupt here and we're not gonna discuss this, it's not on the agenda. And uh, I'll, I'll have a meeting with my CAO and we'll discuss further on it. But right now she said it's not to be on there. So I have to defer to her. Uh, Peter, uh, Peter, Deborah Strzok, please. Hi there. Um, just with regards to the parking and, and being lenient when there's a forecast of snow, I think it needs to be even in the cases of ice. A lot of people, when they know it's going to mm -hmm. be icy, which we have way more icy days than snowy days. So that needs to be taken into consideration too, that they will not be ticketed. Sure, That's all. I agree. I think they're going to um, be looking at this quite clearly. So thank you very much, Deborah, for your comments. Yeah. Always appreciated. Uh, Bruce Drake. Yeah, just an easy point to follow up on, uh, on uh, Deborah's comment. Uh, we do have a practice, I understand our staff have a practice of uh, spreading salt when there's a risk, a significant risk of icy conditions. I, I just think for operational purposes, we could be uh, very lenient on ticket issues or forgiving them if we have spread salt, because I know that's triggered by the risk of a temperature below zero. Thank you. Okay, I have Ben, no one else. I've Ben Chulastani back again. Go ahead, Ben. Thank you, Mayor Walder. I wanted to ask uh, the correspondence regarding uh, new DOC applications with respect to the plan 2020 um, to be added to the agenda. Right now, um, I'm going to just let you know that we've, um, we've deferred anything about new DOCs right now. The map that you're referring to is a proposed plan from the federal government, from the Port of Vancouver. Nothing's written in stone at this point. That's a proposed plan. And uh, we've removed the item from the agenda this time because it's something we felt the rest of the uh, staff or council felt was so important that we really needed to have a full complement of council. Uh, it's, it's bad timing. Um, you know, people have waited 18 years for new docs, but we just have to wait for a few more months. Uh, also, the port has stalled. Um, putting these stocks forward. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why, but we've been told that uh, they're, they, they've stalled their process in the meantime. So we can't be in a rush because they're not in a rush anymore. So hope that answers the question. Uh, thank you, Mayor Walder. So, um, so what about, so uh, I understand, so you're not going to discuss the plan. What about the requested revisions or concerns from the resident with respect to that plan. How can the residents ensure that their concerns are addressed before such a proposal comes back to the council? In other words, um, I, I, I remember that from the, the, the council agenda, uh, which was uh, basically um, postponed, um, all three readings were included under the same council meeting. So I'm wondering, I think that would be inappropriate. I mean, it would be unfair for not letting the residents to, to raise concerns related to the plan and bring up issues, for example, the discrepancy between plan 1999 uh, which was the previous uh, plan uh, from the port and the new proposal in 2020. So in other words, how can residents ensure their concerns uh, are addressed before any resolutions are made on such proposals, especially now that it's being deferred to a later date? All, re all recommendations that are 
coming in are being, we have a consultant that was working with us on this and she's the one who helped with the port drafting the plan. And all our comments and concerns go through her and to the port. That those plans are drafted by the port, not the village. You okay. mean the designated and locations or the, the locations? They are proposed, Ben, as I said in my last conversation, these are proposed locations. If anybody has another location, I don't know what happens because that's the port decision. Those are port decisions. Phone the port. I understand they are port decision, but I mean, what about the proposal? So for example, if somebody wants to build a dock at a certain location, so who's involved in making basically uh, uh, making proposals? So I understand ultimately the decision is with the port, uh, Mayor Walder. But Your uh, Worship, the full discussion on this matter will be brought back to council and there will be full discussion with the residents at that time. Thank you so very much. At the same time, so the three readings will not happen at the same time. Is that not? Right? It generally does not happen three readings at uh, at the same time. Sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. I can't say until it actually happens. Okay, we've finished this discussion. Um, I have John. I need your last name, John. Can you please change your name on the screen? Uh, sorry, I cannot uh, change it. If somebody can change it for me, thank change you. It for you. Find you on the screen. And what is your last name, John? Thank you, Shustani. I'm just changing it here. Uh, Shustani. I think I've spelled that right, I hope, John. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. My question is, I understand that uh, Lorna Dysart wants to conceal the discriminatory plan created either by the village or the port. But I wanted to know the plan that you were referring to that was a, a decision of the port. Who proposed to remove a, the location, basically the, not, the proposed we're not, location? We're discuss, we just said that to, to Ben, your brother, uh, that this is going to be brought forward at another meeting for full public input. Okay, thank you. I understand. No, my, my question is in the, with respect to the to, to, the, to that indiscriminatory plan, which removed a potential dock from the, our, uh, from the frontage of 3762. I'm not gonna speak to that any further. That, that matter is in litigation. I'm not gonna discuss it any further. That's your second strike. If you speak about it again, I will remove you. Thank you. So just wanted, other... be, just wanted to be clear, is the council's position is, is that the new dock applications it should be brought before a court. I'm not a lawyer, but I've said we've already going to be, it will be brought forward when we have a full council. It will be brought forward to public meetings, more on council for discussion. Okay. There's nothing we can do or talk about in the meantime. If you've got a problem, yeah. with, if you've got a problem with the plan, I'm going to ask you to contact the port directly, not through this forum. Thank you. Okay. Thank Is there you. Anybody just wanted to, thank you. Thank you. Just wanted to make sure that. Please do not have three readings before this plan is final. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate your comments. Um, are there anybody else in the gallery or from council that has any further discussion? That's on, that was all on, oh goodness, the letters, the correspondence. Okay. And one more item, just a moment. All right, so we are now under number nine, new business. Do any council members have any new business to discuss? Bruce has his hand up. I lose all my participants there. Here you are, Bruce. Go yes, ahead. thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, first point, it seems to me, and I and and uh, I appreciate it may not technically be new business, but there is this issue of our uh, restrictive parking regulations. Uh, we are coming up on the deadline that was placed. I do think parking is something that falls into that category of being a significant uh, issue of interest to the community. So I think it should wait for a new council. Uh, so I'd like to propose that we extend. The parking restrictions we have as they are 
until the end of March. So I would recommend five months on that, which will give a new council time to consider how it wants to deal with that. Uh, could I could I suggest um, an amendment? <laughs> I would really like to accommodate the Sasma Fire Department volunteers. I think that's very okay. important. Um, so I would like to suggest an amendment to accommodate the Sasma Volunteer Fire Department. Uh, and instead of creating more work for staff to get them to issue passes to them, I would rather do it in a way that each of them seems to have a plate right on their on at least one of their yep. vehicles that says Sasamat. So I would I would um, I would like to suggest an amendment to to have that be considered as um, as a pass. Excuse would me, Your Worship. I did. Um, talk to the bylaw enforcement officers when this was raised before and they said they would never issue a ticket to a member of the Sassamat Volunteer Fire Department. That's good to know Lorna. Then then what I would suggest is for uh, council to send a letter to to Jay Sharp, to Chief Jay Sharp, to let him know uh, you know that because I don't think that's well known throughout the department. And given the fact that majority, a large majority of all of our volunteers are from Anmore. Um, so most of them obviously don't hold passes for Belcara. Um, and, and also because the lake is closing so early lately, um, you know, in the last few mm -hmm. summer days, they lose that water access. So if we can grant them uh, if we can at least let them know that he can come to Belcara, they can come to Belcara and park anywhere they wish. Obviously, they're not going to be parking in front of fire hydrants. <laughs> so uh, anywhere they wish that is resident only. Um, so to, to have that communication sent to them, please. For sure. Thank you. If I, can, if I can just suggest, the wording should simply be that we will treat vehicles so deckled the same as we would treat residents. Uh, okay. Because residents can park in locations that would warrant them a ticket. So I think the same should apply and I'm sure they won't do it, but we should have the same practice. We don't want anyone parking in unsafe locations. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so back, that's a to, back to my motion and I accept the amendment with you know, recognition that uh, we treat uh, SASMAT volunteer fire department volunteers vehicles uh, as we would a resident vehicle. Uh, I'm happy to uh, include that in the amendment, uh, sorry, in the extension as an amendment. Yeah, and, and also, sorry, Bruce, the amendment is for a letter to be sent to them from the municipality. Yes. Uh, to, just to communicate, because probably most of them don't know. So. Yeah. That's a wonderful idea. Agreed. Is there any comments from the gallery? I have Deborah Strutt. Hi. Sorry, just going back to the correspondence with regards to the docs, and um, there were a number of people on the shared docs talking about the fees. And um, could we just finish talking about the parking? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Let me go back. Thank to you. That. I'll put yeah. your hand back up here. Okay. So the motion's on the table, as amended, mm -hmm. and. Um, before we vote on this motion, can I just get some clarity from Lorna? Um, so Lorna, so what's happening? Are we going to be ticketing um, uh, rentlessly like we have, bef what, like we've been doing the whole summer, or is it going to be more like Anwar does, which is on a complaint basis when it's off season? Um, yes, Your Worship, that's basically what is taking place now. I, I get reports all the time about how many tickets are written that come into the office and there are very few written right now. There might be a couple warning tickets this past weekend and one other ticket, but um, it's totally different than it is when we're in the full summer season. Okay, so it's basically on a complaint basis. Yeah. So yeah, I would, then I would consider um, um, supporting the motion because right now I really feel bad for those residents, like I said, that have to live with the signs. <laughs> that they don't want in front of their houses, even though the, the motion was going only to October 31st. But if we're just enforcing on a complaint basis, then I would support the motion. Thank you. And this is to the end of March, Bruce? Yes, I'm wanting to provide enough time that a new council is in place and has a chance to consider steps it wants to take. I'm, I'm very aware that of course, March 31 is on the 
uh, on the very edge of the beginning of spring season. So it's not as though a new council will have forever. And, uh, and uh, so I, I do, I empathize with those that are concerned about having the signs there, but at the moment, uh, I think we should just stick with the policy we have till we have a full council. Okay, so Lorna, can you just confirm then if we have that to the end of March, that means we would have start having meetings before that, so that Absolutely. the restrictions, if any, uh, were to be lifted, they could be lifted at that time, however Absolutely. they were going to be. Okay, well, I'm, all right. So I'm gonna yes, call for- worship, the, sorry. Thank you, so I'm gonna call for the motion. And all in favor? Aye. None opposed, that is carried. Thank you so much. Um, so now it was, I'm going back to you, Deborah. Thank you. Okay, um, just with regards to a few letters that were sent in from the people on the large, the shared docs and complaining about the fee from the port and just so that they understand that they may be upset with six people sharing and having to pay that, but anybody that has their own doc, they're paying that just by themselves. So to take a look at that with regards to that. So it's well, I'm not, yeah, I'm gonna just jump in here. I'm not sure if that's exactly what the port is doing and why they've stalled. Uh, I know there's been a lot of feedback from many residents, not just here, but North Vancouver, Port Moody, Belcara, there's been a huge contingent of um, uh, people that have been on that and talking to as high up as they can get. So I really don't know what the stall is. That might be part of it. Uh, we don't have anything to do with the port fees. The port fees um, are, are when they have set it, it's set. And whether you're shared or single, and that's throughout, that's not just Belcara, that's North Van, Port Moody, that's everybody. That's right. I, I just wanted to say that so that people understood that, okay. Yeah means everybody and I knew so well it was not council it's not staff it's yeah. the board so yeah thank you thank you for your comments always appreciated and now I um, have my council Ben Shulistani thank you Mayor Wilder so I wasn't sure whether doc uh, basically discussions on doc I mean I see Deborah Strzok is talking about doc fees but I always <laughs> assume that dock fees were part of the basically the motion on docks i mean the, the whole docks on marine uh, or bedwell bay uh, so is that matter partly resolved i mean i wasn't sure when deborah was talking about fees on no. she on was Debra. okay sorry she was talking about the the fees that were designated by the port of vancouver is what she was talking about and she just wanted i i, I understand but i mean uh, um, I always assumed, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, so the whole, everything related to Bedwell Bay was put on hold. So was dock fees not put on hold with respect, because I understand the village is now taking control of all that, the village uh, instead of the, instead of the port. So has- Okay. We, I'm going to, I'm just going to repeat this again. Those fees that she was talking about were ports that have already been implemented by the Port of Vancouver. The Port of Vancouver has slowed down the process. We're not sure why. As a result of us having not a full confluent of council, we too have pulled anything talking about docks off the table until we have a new mayor and a council. So we have a full council and there's nothing more to discuss about it. So if you've got any comments or concerns regarding the fees, uh, I'll write a letter. Oh, okay. So, so basically what Deborah was saying, she was not supposed to say it, but... No, yeah. she can say which that those fees are implemented. The Port of Vancouver has implemented those fees. That has nothing to do with Belcara. Those fees are not Belcara fees. So can we just move along? We discussed that. Uh, John Shulistani, please. Thank you. I believe the misunderstanding is that the motion with respect to, uh, I mean, with respect to port fees, was removed from today's agenda, but uh, le, uh, Ms. Estruck was allowed to discuss about those fees, but we are not. So just what the confusion is. We are not right. allowed to discuss about uh, docs regarding doc applications, but doc fees are allowed to discuss. We want to no. con uh, confirm those discrepancies. No, she was just confirming that those fees were implemented by the court. And they will be part of our fee structure when we talk about the docs when it comes back to the agenda. It's not on the agenda now. It was removed from our agenda. 
And we're, it's not, it's, we're not discussing um, box today. We're gonna wait until we have a full complement of counsel, at which time we'll talk about the applications. We'll talk about the fees, which will include the port fees and any surcharges, et cetera, et cetera. But it's not on our agenda today and it won't be until such time that we have a full complement of counsel. Thank you. So may I also ask for a confirmation or just a clarification uh, that uh, in discriminatory plan, will, will, will that be discussed with the port or are you going to discuss it with the port or should we follow up with the port? Who should be re taking responsibility for that discriminatory plan? Who proposed well, it and who approved it? I don't know if it's a discriminatory plan at all. Um, that's, I think, this part of the litigation going on, and I'm not going to discuss it anymore. Thank you. Well, I disagree with that. There is no litigation on a new plan. Mayor. You're talking about a discriminatory plan. I don't know if it's discriminatory or not. It has to do with the dock next door and your spot, and it's under litigation, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, I'm not talking I'm not about gonna, I'm okay, not going to discuss it anymore. That's your third strike. If you speak anymore, I'm going to remove you. Is there any more discussion? No. Okay. We are not allowed. Uh, new business. Oh. And public, we're now up to number 10 public question period. I'd like to ask the gallery if you have any questions on the agenda items for council. Uh, if you do, please state your name and address for the record. And my first person I have here on is Bruce Drake. Thank you. I should have, I uh, didn't get my hand up early enough. Uh, this oh, this okay. drifts back into new business, I'm afraid. And it's simply a heads up. Sure. It's a notice of motion, so it needn't uh, affect us dramatically tonight. But I think in our next meeting, we have to address and be prepared to discuss uh, the extension of some of the committees we have. I think all of council uh, recognizes, as do many residents, how much work has been done by various uh, committees. And if I am not mistaken, they expire at the end of this year. So we will have to give some thought as to uh, uh, which of those, and I suspect many of them, we would ask the volunteers to continue serving on into the new year, at least till we have a full council. So I just wanted to flag that and those council members who have responsibilities for committees uh, would ask that they engage with the chairs and vice chairs and uh, determine whether they are prepared to continue serving. And uh, if we don't have a council rep any longer, and I don't think that's the case, but if we don't, we'll need to address uh, who will serve as the council liaison. That, that was it, uh, Your Worship. So that's a notice of motion for our next- For, uh, for the next meeting, yeah. Okay, and Lorna, you've got that? Thank you. Thank you. So we're gonna have a motion written on that next meeting, correct? I, I will bring one forward, yeah. Perfect, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have Caroline. Uh, nope. Oh, oh you put your hand down, sorry. All right, then I have Jim Chisholm. Oh, Sherry Chisholm or Jim? Jim, can you hear me? I can. Yeah, back to my question with North Vancouver. Oh, yes. Uh, about the water, what, what did we ask him to report on? Lorna? Um, yes, Your Worship. Um, Chris Boyd was asked to bring back a report um, asking the District of North Vancouver if they would increase um, their water rates or their water volume to the village of Alcare and what those costs would look like. Good. And I have been in touch um, with Chris and he has again asked the district of North Vancouver uh, for that information. As you know, um, several municipalities are affected by COVID, but they are working on it. And Chris is working to bring that report back to council soon. When, when do you think they will report? I, I don't know, I'm sorry. I. I thought we would have heard by now, but we have asked. And so um, I just received a response last week that we should be hearing back. So I, I'm sorry, I can't tell you any more than that. Uh, pardon me, you, you've got a response to what? Suggesting maybe another week or two or what? I'm thinking, uh, only thinking Jim within the month. So within the next couple of council meetings. If I may jump in, so we're depending not just on Chris on this, my understanding is, Jim, because I asked the same question last week as well, 
we're depending on the district of North Vancouver for response oh. as well. Yeah. I don't understand what is she saying? Oh, uh, Jim, I, I'm saying that uh, we're not just depending on Chris on this, because that's a question I asked as well uh, from staff last week. We're also depending on the district of North Vancouver on this. Well, so I, I mean, that's, that's where it makes it a bit more trickier. And, um, I, I'm assuming, I'll be, if I'm not uh, correct, am I correct, Lorna, you and you and Chris were speaking to North Vancouver together, if I remember correctly. That's right. That was about uh, two months ago. Yes. So, I mean, they're going to answer that request, are they not? That's what they're coming up with, a, a suggestion on how to deal with this? Yes, they are. Absolutely. So what is Carolina talking about? No, she was just confirming that she had asked me to find out that information last week so okay yeah so we're working on it <laughs> thank you but she just asked your question to Lorna last week so sorry <laughs> sorry I made it confusing <laughs> um who have we got here I got uh John Shulistani thank you mayor <laughs> I have a, a motion or proposal I would like uh, Ms. Lorna Dysart to please resign from her position of the of Belcara's staff for being for actually lying to the public. And uh, I'm going to stop you right there. Um, I'm not going to entertain this kind of conversation on this uh, forum. Okay. Thank you very much. And have Don Babineau, please. Well, hi. Good evening. Um, Am I able to make a comment and then ask a question in regards to conflict of interest? Lorna? Um, I don't know. I would not um, answer any conflict of interest questions, Your Worship. Okay, there we go. Um, I, so I, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I don't understand. I don't know who you would like to answer a question of conflict of interest, but I'm not an expert on it. And I don't think this is the forum for discussing that. Okay, sorry about that. And I have, I have another question then. Okay, there's no other hands up. So you go right ahead. All right, um, this is in regards to the sale of road ends. Mm -hmm. And it is not, I just want to, state clearly at the onset that it's not a rehash of the OCP amendment that uh, motion that was defeated in the last meeting. Okay. Um, we've been talking about road ends now for, I'm guessing, seven years. It, it certainly went into the last council and also uh, into this council. Uh, it's been a very contentious issue. Mm -hmm. And my understanding, I don't know if this is correct or not, but the previous council spent $200,000 on this issue. Uh, Current council spent sixty thousand dollars. I understand, um, and a lot of time has been invested by staff and and the current council and previous council. Um, so there's been a lot invested in this initiative, and my feeling is that if there was ten steps uh, to get to a point where residents and council would be fully informed of what this whole issue is all about what can be done, what can't be done, who's in favor, who's not in favor, um, what's in the best interest of the village. Um, and just because the OCP amendment was defeated doesn't mean that we shouldn't continue uh, on with this initiative. Um, what I'd like to see is the Revenue Generation Committee be reactivated. Uh, I'd like to see council identify the remaining steps necessary uh, uh, to be prepared to sell road ends. Um, and then I'd like those in favor of wanting to sell road ends uh, be able to prepare a presentation. Uh, those against selling road ends uh, be given the same opportunity to prepare a presentation. Um, all of the concerns that were submitted at the last meeting uh, or at the last public hearing uh, would be addressed. And again, all of the, you know, what can be done, what can't be done in regards to waterfront lots, et cetera. Um, and then we have a public hearing when we have all of this information accumulated. So we, if there was 10 steps, we, we, we complete all of those 10 steps and we educate uh, ourselves, we educate the council, we educate uh, the residents. So again, we can make an informed decision. 
And once all of this is done, we have a public hearing at that time. Uh, it'd be nice to have a mail drop for those people that, that are unable to attend the public hearing so that everybody is fully informed. And then what I would propose, uh, we have a by-election coming up at some point, is that we have a referendum on this long-standing issue. Uh, and uh, we have a referendum that coincides with the, with the uh, uh, by-election and let the residents decide. Uh, and, and, and at that time, if we've all done our homework, we can, everybody can make an informed decision on whether it's best for the village or not. But ultimately, we let the residents decide as to whether or not the sale of road ends makes sense for Belterra or not. And the timing of that might be good in that. Um, May I just, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I have to jump in to be consistent with what I've done in the past. As soon as this conversation becomes about selling the specific lots, I will recuse myself and declare conflict on lot 17. But so I would also like to state that this discussion really can't take place because it has gone into the sale of the road ends as the report was defeated and it should not be discussed at this point. Thank you. I'm, I'm just going can I jump in? Can I just jump in for one second? This is one reason. Uh, the de unfortunately, the delegation, uh, which was on the previous agenda, had to be removed because the uh, the mayor had um, uh, resigned. It was one idea, one item. But and my apologies for that having been permitted to be even put on there um, in the first place. Um, we have talked about this, and this is one reason we didn't. We we want to wait until we have a full complement of council. This is a very very important decision. And so um, we can't bring it back. Not none of us, us three can bring it back. So when we have a full complement of council, then it can possibly be re-raised. So, but not, not, not tonight. The, uh, okay, I'm, I can't talk about it anymore. As Lorna said, I'm sorry. You've, you've made some great points, Don, but we can't discuss it tonight. It's already been raised. I just, I just want to make one clarification, if I may. Sure. I'm, I'm not talking about bringing back the OCP amendment. I'm not talking about that at all, but you know that's 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 one of of the steps that would have to be taken. But I'm not talking about re revitalizing that at this time. Okay. I'm suggesting that we we go down a path where we can. Um, I'm really sorry. But yeah, I think we yes. have to stop this conversation, yes. and and bring it up when we have a new a full council. Okay. Um, Bruce, did you have your hand up briefly there? Uh, okay. No, thank you. Okay, we have Jamie Ross. Jamie? Hello, Jamie. So, Jamie Ross. Hi, we hear you. Thanks, yeah. Jamie. You're welcome. Um, I'd just like to, through the Deputy Mayor, Lisa Wilder, ask if Don Babineau could tell the people on this call whether he actually has information that the previous council spent $200,000 or if he's just picking that from basically out of the air. Yes, um, I was gonna ask the same question too because I had a figure and it was like half of that, less than half of that. So I'm not sure where the 200,000 came from. Can we ask that question, Lorna? Well, I, I, I actually, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, I'll hold. I, I actually um, confirmed uh, with staff that the figure was approximately $11,000 that the previous council had spent on this matter. Oh, okay. 11,000? Yeah. That, that, would have been the, that would have been the study that was used uh, by the Revenue Generating Committee? Yes. Um, my, my, my error then, I, I apologize. I, uh, uh, it actually, I had, made a mental note of that when I had a conversation with Bruce. Um, so I, I must have misheard that. So my, my apologies. Don, you might, you might have been confusing it with the, uh, the uh, review of our bu building structure, our building uh, standards, size of houses that- uh, Oh, perhaps, perhaps. That, that one yeah, runs perhaps. into those sorts of dollars. Yeah, that was over 200,000, the zoning bylaw. So I, I, I must have confused the two. I, it, it was it, it's certainly not my intent to uh, um, inflate any of these numbers. I, I, I apologize for the uh, confusion on that. Thank you. Uh, Jamie, 
That's yeah. that's seventy the seventy one thousand dollars then. So it's still a lot of money. Yeah. Um, uh, Jamie, did you have any further comments? No, I appreciate uh, Don's uh, comment on that and his apology. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Don, very much. And we're getting on here. I'm um, going to wrap this up pretty quick. David Chulistani. Hi, how are you doing? Thank you. Very fine, David. Good, good. Um, I just had a quick question. I was wondering about the, the public beach at the end of Marine Avenue, and I believe it's would be Watson. Um, mm -hmm. Is that going to stay, stay as a public beach or what is the plan with that? It's a public beach. Okay, it's all, it's always the, been the, the beach. OCP, the, the beach I, is... I, believe the, I believe the OCP had proposed a private dock at that location. It doesn't matter if there's a dock there. The beach is always the beach. The beach is always public. I see. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, David. I appreciate your comments. Oh. I don't see anybody else. Okay, so public question period is over. Thank you everyone for your comments. Uh, item 11 is adjournment. Would someone move to adjourn? Moved. Uh, I'll second. And Carolina. And thank you, thank you, Madam Mayor. All, it, all in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed, motion carries. We've uh, closed our meeting at 8.40 p.m. Thank you all so very much for being very patient with me. Thank you, Madam Mayor, for, for chairing the meeting. Yes, thank you, Lisa, very yeah. good. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, good night, everybody. All right, thanks. Um, Paula, do, do I don't need to stay on to have this recorded, correct? Sorry, are you there, Lisa? I can't hear you. Oh, I was just saying I don't have to stay on for. No, it to be I'm going to end it for everyone. Leave. Okay, right now. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Tomorrow. you. Good night. All right. Thanks. Good night, Deborah.